thousands of CCs, hundreds of groups, and 26 bests in show. But there can only be one top dog. This is Around the Dog World, best of 2014. Today we're at the stunning Stoke Rochford Hall where we will run through the Dog World Arden Grange top dog placings and have a look at 2014's most successful dogs and we'll stop off in the last best in show ring of the year. Joining us today are a couple of experts in Andrew Brace and Di Johnson. Thank you both for joining us. Now Andrew and Di, it's been a record breaking year in both breed and best in show rings, but can you pick out a, a favourite moment from the ringside? I certainly can. Go on. Because I'm going to agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, without question. Um, and I can relive the moment as if it was happening two seconds ago, was watching the best in show ring at Crufts. Mm -hmm. And Jace, Jason Lynn just walking forward with Ricky when he just put himself into the most perfect free stack and just created an absolutely perfect picture. It was a goosebumps moment. Yes, it was. And of course, he then went on and won Best in Show. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of those great dog moments that I, I certainly will never forget. No, I won't argue with that. You know, my year's been more difficult, so I'll go with that. It, it certainly was a spectacular Best in Show lineup and a, and a phenomenal <coughs> Best in Show win. So very popular after his amazing 2013. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember it. Jilly was extremely popular, of course. Yeah. But I don't remember a, a dog perhaps as universally liked as Ricky was. I think was. the thing about Ricky that everyone found so endearing was the fact that he was a relatively young dog and he very quickly developed a personality yes. unlike any other. I mean, this little gimmick thing that he has about coming down and bowing to the yes. judge. I mean, that wasn't trained. I mean, the dog just started doing it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, people just loved this. So I think people identified with him, not just as a great standard poodle, but, but as a wonderful character. Now, before we get on to the, the dogs today, we should run through the Dog World Arden Grange top dog point system, because it's, it's a little bit complicated and sometimes a little confusing. So here are Andrew's need to know basics. Dog World Arden Grange top dog points are only available to dogs competing at championship shows in the UK. We start in the breed ring. Any dog that wins a challenge certificate gains two points and the best of breed winner gets an extra one. In the group ring, the winner takes home five points, second takes three, the third place gets two, and fourth in the group wins a single point. Then when we move into best in show, the overall winner receives another five points, with the reserve taking a further three. So a CC breed winning through to best in show can take a total of 13 points from a single championship show. And without CCs, the maximum is 10. So we've got plenty to get on with today. We'll start with the gun dog group. That was the, the lowest ranked of the, the, the group winners. When we arrived at LKA, there were still seven dogs in contention for winning the Dog World Arden Grange top gun dog prize. What does that say about the, the gun dog group, Di? Well, numerically, it's such a strong group. Um, it's a, a hotly contested group, isn't it? I mean, when the gun dog group comes in, we all at the ringside think, golly, what a group this is. It's a challenge, isn't it? It's a, a hugely competitive group. I think it's fairly normal that it would be widespread, the, the top winners. Then that takes us to Top Gun Dog for 2014 and an unusual one, a Spanish water dog, Valentissimo's Castro, mm -hmm. I believe. Amazing for, for a rare breed to top its group. Yeah, I mean, the, the breed doesn't have challenge certificates as yet. It's a, it's a relatively new breed to this country. Nigel Eggington, who owned and, and bred Castro, who is um, utterly committed to this breed and preserving them as the Spaniards would want, as a functional, rustic breed. And full credit to Nigel again, he's allowed this James Newton um, who is a very talented young handler and, and trainer of dogs to handle Castro because by Nigel's own admission he was a bit of a handful 
James got the best out of him, and he's quite happy to sit ringside and watch James carry on with the dog and, and get the glory, as it were. Speaking of Nigel, we caught up with Nigel and James at LKA to talk about Castro's phenomenal year. Well, gentlemen, what a year. Spanish Watch Dogs have never done it before, but you've finished the year top gun dog. How, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Doesn't talk in, can't believe it. It's just amazing. Just so proud. I'm proud of what James and Castro have done for the breed. And, and James, you, you, you get the joy of handling him. What's he like? Uh, he's wonderful. I mean, he's a, he's a handful. He's a typical Spanish water dog. He has a real zest for life and loves showing. He's a true showman, but he's just that, 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 that makes him what he is. He's got a superb character. And seeing the results this year, you must be overjoyed having been able to watch from the outside and, and see all those awards come your way. See, yes, it's, uh, sometimes it's worse from outside because you're not in control, but just to, when that first Group 1 came, it was just like, wow, <laughs> exploding with well, proudness and happiness and joy. And to see everybody else at Windsor doing that as well was just brilliant, and the congratulations, just unbelievable. Tell us a little bit about Castro. Well, Castro is a home homebred um, to a Spanish champion, Coco de la Galilea, who at the moment is following in his dad's footsteps. Yeah. And it's just like him in so many ways. It's quite quite eerie, really, just to see his dad reproduced in him. And hopefully he can take the breed forward next year and throughout Europe. And Castro's got a bit of a different look today. Uh, at Windsor, he was, he was more full-coated. Explain the, the process at the moment. Well, the Spanish water dog should be shown as a rustic breed with no aesthetic grooming whatsoever and should be clipped completely off once a year. Right. Therefore, during the year, you, you're bound to get some months with a Spanish water dog in a shorter coat. Yeah. Um, so we've, uh, I think we've proved to people that you can show a Spanish water dog in a clipped coat yeah. and still do very well. We're still being shortlisted in groups and he's still had best of breeds. And, and in Spain, he won the uh, intermediate class in the Spanish Monographica this year as well. Which is, you know, to take a Spanish water dog back to Spain and beat them on their own turf is, is, must be a joy. That just qualifies the work we're doing here. And as we said, the competition in the Gundog group is, is very tough. Um, in second place in the Gundog group was the Irish setter, Gwendoriff Whippersnapper, and in third, Irish water spaniel Merlin, who we watched win the group at Crafts a couple of years ago. Well, two great breeds. Irish setters have always had, they're almost the universal, everybody knows, and you know, red setters, we call them. You have to give credit to the breeders and, and they present them so beautifully. So they're always gleaming, aren't they, and in lovely condition, and um, well, they represent the gun dog group almost. And as for the Irish water, haven't they captured a, a, the imagination? They're, they're such an appealing, attractive breed. But isn't it interesting that Irish Water Spaniels are probably one of the weakest breeds numerically and yet ever since I can remember there has always been at least one fabulous Irish Water out. Yes, right back to the days of Pat Sutton's Golly. So, oh and, and before. We were taught when we were young, I was young before you were Andrew of course, um, mm. we were taught um, that the priorities with gun dogs were soundness and good mouths. No question, I'm mm. not absolutely sure that mm. still holds good, so mm. when we do see good movers in the gun dog group, we're delighted. Mm. And talking about Merlin, the, the Irish Waters, the early part of his year, he became a full champion. Yeah, I think that's, that's admirable. Yes. And, and, you know, full marks to Judith Carruthers for persevering and proving that he's not just a pretty face and a great character. The next one was another competitive group, the Pastoral Group. While we were at LKA, there were still three possible top Pastoral winners. Runner-up was just uh, Mr Blobby, a Cardigan Corgi guy. I find that quite interesting, Simon. Um, since the docking thing, the quality of, of the tailed corgis has risen and sadly the quality of, of what we would call the real corgis has dropped. However, in this dog, Mr Blobby's case, you have to admire the immaculate presentation of handler and dog. They always put on a great performance. The handler and owner is a very experienced breeder and he's reaping the just rewards of breeding well for many years. And third in the pastoral group, Andrew, was this Pyrenean champion Cherry Bear Simply Special at Chisana. Had a fantastic year. A very successful year for the entire family, I think, because hasn't the dogs, Sire and Little Sister, also yeah. won groups this year? That's quite an achievement and one that I can't imagine has happened in many breeds for a long while. 
but topping the pastoral group in 2014 was Sid the Shetland Sheepdog at a ripe old age of six, uh, champion Edgelonian singing the blues. You say ripe old age of six, Simon, let's be honest. You know, in most breeds, this is when dogs should be yes, at their peak. Yes. You know, we're in an age where everyone wants instant gratification and people are moaning that they don't win CCs at 18 months. And, um, you know, six years of age. And I know you're giving me that look. Like, I aren't, am, I aren't surely you the am. the person that gives all these puppies CCs? <laughs> yeah, but I can spot young potential. However, you say that, but he has won groups since 2009. Yeah, so he's, 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 had, he's, he's had a sustained career. Um, he's a beautifully presented dog with a beautifully presented handler who everyone loves. He broke the breed record this year. He became a best in show winner, all breeds this year. He also went off to Amsterdam, of course, to represent the country at the Yukonuba World Challenge. So, yes, it's been a remarkable year for Debbie. Sid is that once-in-a-lifetime dog a showing fool. He just loves it. Let me get in the ring and show off and win. What a, what a gift that dog is. And Deb's brilliant winner. Good morning everybody. Now when they're made reasonably well and trained physically like you would a gymnast which is really all that dressage is, you end up with something that stays sound for a very great deal longer. What a fabulous walk. To the beautiful setting for Around the Dog World today, Stoke Rochford Hall. Today we're analysing 2014's biggest winners. Now Andrew and I, the next group for us again was decided at LK, the utility group. But the runner-up, Andrew, Toy Poodle Vanatonia As You Wish, one we're going to see a lot of in the future. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, this is a, a black toy that Lee Cox and Tom Isherwood have and a daughter of their big winning Graham who had a, a great run with a year or two back. Um, I first actually was conscious of her when, I think she won the group at Birmingham National under Thomas Yackel. Mm. She has an exquisite face and such poodly carriage. And um, I think, I mean, they, they, they struggled to make her up amazingly. Cause she, you know, when I first saw her, I, I assumed that she was a champion, um, but now she's really got into her stride. And yeah, I think she'll make the going tough next year, I think. But this year's Dog World Arden Grange top utility is a breed that many people will be unfamiliar with, a German Spitz Klein. This one, champion Longsdale Genuine. We spoke to her co-owner, Dale Francis, at LKA. Dale, a massive congratulations. You. Did you expect at the beginning of the year that Jen was going to be top utility? Never in a million years did I imagine she was going to be top utility. Tell us about the year. Um, it's sort of, she doesn't hold a court very often. Um, <laughs> she's held it quite a lot this year. Um, to go to win one group was amazing. To go on and win several groups has been absolutely fantastic, and to end up top utility has just been a dream come true. And it's a, a very new thing for the breed. Yes, it's the first uh, German Spitz to win top utility. First German Spitz to ever win best in show at a general championship show, not just once but twice. Which is a, an incredible year in itself. Yes, definitely so. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about Jen when she's at home. Um, Jen at home is an absolute diva. Um, Anyone that comes to the house is there to see Jen. They're not here to see me or Gary, they're here to see Jen, definitely. She's had a great year this year. Are we going to see more of her? Um, she's four year old now, so five in March. Who knows what the future holds for Jen. In a group, when you're in the ring next to flashy breeds like Puddles, yeah. it's got to be satisfying to know that Jen can put herself amongst them so well. To be honest, I didn't, I wasn't going to keep Jen. It was <laughs> Gary's decision, um, so I thank Gary for that. Um, when I'm in the ring, she just is a bit different. It's not like any other dog that I've, I've handled. She is the one, she's completely dedicated. She does everything I ask of her and she never ever lets me down. For me, she's just, she's special. Genuine by name, genuine by nature. Now Di, it was a historic year for the breed, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Not, not a breed we expect to see winning groups. However, 
beautifully handled and presented. And there are occasions when a dog is in the right place at the right time under the right judge. Everything fell slotted into place for her on certain days, didn't it? Yeah, um, I think the first group came at Welks. Then she rose to prominence and created history for the breed by winning Best in Show at um, the first of the Scottish Kennel Club shows. Uh, a win that she repeated then um, at Blackpool. So, uh, yeah, she had a great summer, a great summer. Our next winner is the Dog World Arden Grange Top Hound for 2014. And I, we spoke about this dog on last year's programme. This is champion Classicus Cassander the Saluki. Had another fantastic year. Yeah, he's a lovely dog. The epitome of elegance. Um, everything the breed should be. And, and an interesting fact is that within the hound group, the second dog, I believe, is the elk hound. Yes. Um, and isn't it interesting that whilst the Saluki has all the quality and elegance and grace, the elk hound is the epitome of a robust, workmanlike, serviceable breed. I find that quite interesting. Both excellent dogs, but really a million miles away from each other in type, but hounds. And at LK, we spoke to Jeanette Glaster after a very tense day and year that sees Dexter finish top hound. Jeanette, you've had a pretty phenomenal year with Dexter. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. And you've had a bit of a tense day. You've yes. been waiting for the results to come in, and finally they're in, and you are confirmed as top hound for 2014. How does that feel? Absolutely wonderful. Something you know you only dream of, but never dreamt of it, because there's so many good hounds out there. So it's wonderful. And he had a pretty good year last year, um, finished runner-up or, or thereabouts in the hound group. So he this top fluky last year, and I think it was about third, joint third in the hound group. See, that must have been a pretty good year last year. You must be overwhelmed. I am, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about him. Um, well, this is Dexter, Classicus Cassander, and he came to us at four months old. He's absolutely wonderful. He's very easy going. He likes to be shown. They are a complicated breed. They're very disobedient. <laughs> if they want to do something, they'll do it, and you've got no chance of stopping them. But he's, he's quite good. He will, he will come back. And run us through a little bit of what, what he's managed in, in 2014. 2014 he started the year off taking group one at Manchester <laughs> and then he's actually taken six groups this year and 13 cc's this year and two reserve cc's. So very consistent? Yes. yes. Well, a massive congratulations. Are we going to see more of Dexter? Yes, he will be out next year. Um, not as much because we've got quite a few judges that are coming round again. And the dog competing with Dexter for Top Hound this year was the Norwegian Outcount. And it was great to see Pearl winning so much because she was handled by uh, Junior Handler of the Year a couple of years ago, Will Croxford. Yeah, and it's always good to see these youngsters following through and actually being taken seriously at group level. And Will, Will is one of these young people. I think he's got the respect of pretty much everyone in the sport. He does a good job. There's nothing flashy with him. You know, he just gets out there and quietly handles his dogs well. And the next top dog we have to talk about is the winner of the toy group. And every time we've done this programme, we've come to the toy group and it's always been remarkably competitive. This year is no different. There were three toys in the top ten dogs, all breeds. The winner this year, Andrew, was a long coat chihuahua. Mm. Um, this is Leslie Adams, Holly L. Topaz Chancer. We, we, of course, watched him win Best in Show at South Wales, where he put on a sterling performance. In fact, I mean, he's, he's, he's a chihuahua that always shows. In fact, most chihuahuas always show. I mean, it's part of the breed's character. You know, they are saucy, gassy little dogs, always on their toes, always into everything, always convinced they're much bigger dogs than they actually are. Funny enough, I actually went to a, a chihuahua breed club show a few weeks before Christmas and watched him go Best in Show there in, in very, very tough competition beating, strangely enough, the smooth coat, Play Misty for me, who has been the other chihuahua in contention in our top dogs league. And again, a tremendous little show dog. Both these dogs are fantastic on the go around, always holding their top lines well, um, and never, never giving for a minute. The handler's always on the go, too much so sometimes. I did actually joke with Amy Davis that her smooth coat is the most impossible dog 
to photograph <laughs> because he is never still for a second. Yeah. You know, he's just giving and trying all the time. Why are they so sure they're enormous? <laughs> I mean, they will take on a great day, won't they? You know, they just have... Oh. Well, they're like short people. You're they're right. supremely confident. The, the, yeah, yeah, the short man syndrome. I can think of one or two of those. Yeah. Um, you couldn't have a depressed chihuahua, could you? No, no such thing. <laughs> they just have to be. And they are two exceptional chihuahuas. But we should mention, third place in the toy group was the Pekingese. Uh, the Evergreen Eric. Yeah. Evergreen Eric. Yaki Ua Cantona. And he is, he is. Every year you think he's got to be finished soon, and he isn't. He still comes out and looks terrific. And comes out, he looks stunning. He's willing to move always. He mocks any nonsense that peaks aren't real dogs, doesn't he? Well, and I mean, all, all those Yaki dogs, yeah. and they live like dogs. You know, they're not crated dogs, they're not pampered type. They're out there, you know, running around in the woods and the fields. But, of course, the Dog World Arden Grange top toy for 2014 is the long coat chihuahua, champion Holiel Topaz Chancer. And we spoke to Leslie Adams about the year that has seen him finish third top dog all breeds. At the beginning of the year, could you have hoped that Geoffrey was going to end up top toy? I did hope that he would have a successful year, but never dreamt that it would be top toy and in chihuahuas not long coats but smooth coats you've had a lot of competition with the the smooth coat misty yes um very close competition and um another worthy chihuahua brilliant for the and you breed. had to and you had to wait until today to find out who was going to top the group yeah that was it crunch crunch day today yes and it must have been a bit tense waiting for the results to come in yeah it was but well, lots of people waiting to hear on the other end of the phone so <laughs> yeah have you managed to get on the end of the phone and tell people yet Not yet no. um, tell us a little bit about jeffrey um well he's out of um my champion bitch topaz angel um he was never expected to get into the ring he was very small and i hand reared him for three right. weeks wow. and thought he would just stay as a pet but he actually grew on a little bit and I thought oh he's looking quite nice <laughs> and uh, yeah the rest is history really I brought him out and he never looked back from the day he first came into the ring yeah. and that hand rearing do you think that's uh, created a bit of rapport that you couldn't have got any other way no because his mother was exactly the same temperament right. and showmanship exactly so, um, yeah, I think it's, it's come from her, definitely. And run us through a bit of the record that, that Jeffrey's totted up this year. Um, he's had a best in show, obviously, at South Wales. Yeah. He's had reserve best in show at Border Union, numerous club best in shows, five group ones, a few group twos. Yeah, he's just, he's had an outstanding year. It's been fabulous. And how old is Jeffrey now? And we're going to see more of him. He's just two. So he's wow. still a baby. Um, so, yeah, hopefully next year we'll have another good year with him. Um, <laughs> but his son's coming up fast behind him. <laughs> so he also took the reserve ticket here today. Fantastic. So. Well, a massive congratulations. Um, and hopefully we see you and Geoffrey in 2015. Lovely. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Around the Dog World as we continue to look at the best 2014 had to offer. Today's penultimate group is the working group, another one decided at LKA. Runner-up top dog all breeds was the Bull Mastiff, champion Old Manila's Whiskey Mac for Optimus. A worthy winner, Di? Yeah, he's climbed, hasn't he? We've watched him. Um, yes, he's deserved his wins. He's a great dog. Um, I watch this breed a lot. I find them such a compelling breed. Um, you can imagine this breed standing beside the gamekeeper, warning the poachers off, can't you? All bull mastiffs still have that slightly forbidding expression, and yet you know they're a great breed if, if, if um, you want to make friends with them. This dog has... Um, he's filled the eye of a lot of worthy judges. He's impressive, but I don't think he stands alone. It's a breed I think we all could do well to watch. Well, no, 
big winning dog from Australia yep. has appeared on yep. the scene. Yeah. So um, you've got the two imported males, because Whiskey Mac is also imported from Scandinavia. As yet, I've not actually seen the two of them in the ring together, but it would be very interesting to see. The, um, the new dog, the new import, is a very, very sound-moving dog, a very good dog. Maybe our winning dog has, has a bit of edge and masculinity, but the other has the edge in movement, possibly. They're a good challenge for each other. If you've got time, go, go to the Bull Mastiff rings. There are some good dogs to see there. And I caught up with a delighted Peter Myers at LK. So, Peter, when we spoke to you at Richmond and broke the news you were a reserve top dog then, you were surprised. What's it like knowing the same thing applies in December? Absolutely amazing. Um, just cannot believe it's actually happened. Um, it's such an honour um, to have achieved this you know, top work and deserve in the country. It's just phenomenal for the breed. And you say it's sort of taken over your life, this totting up of points. Yeah, you, you become obsessed. You know, once you broke the news at Richmond, all I've done is watch every show, every breed, <laughs> calculate all the points of every show, um, and it, it just takes over. Um, and you started the year reserve to Wire Fox Oliver at Boston, and you finished the year reserved to Oliver. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. We've achieved so much and enjoyed so much. We've laughed, we've had heartaches, it's, but it's been absolutely fantastic. And to, uh, Tell us, run us over, what's winning Max done this year? Well, he's, he's now on 27 cc's, all with best of breed. He's got seven group ones. He's had two reserve best in shows and a best in show. He's been top bull master for the last two years and he won the bull master of the year event all within 12 months and you're like, what an achievement for a dog, you know. It's and it's it's unheard of to be doing that sort of winning that consistently. Yeah, it really is. You know, we, we've had big winners in the breed, but they've never really gone on to, in the groups. Yeah. Um, you know, you get a group place, you, you get a group two. If you're fortunate, you can get a group one. Yeah. And it happens, you know, maybe every five years. You know, Mac has gone out and had seven group ones. Pinch me, you know, <laughs> is this happening? And Max had this fantastic year. What are his plans beyond December the 31st? Hopefully to repeat what we've done this year. Um, we're looking forward to showing again next year. Um, bring him on and let's see what happens. But Mac, of course, didn't have it all his own way this year, Di. The runner-up top working was Cheo, my prerogative. Another big winner for Sue Ellis. And in fact, the breed CC record holder. Yes, I understand. If the working group is comprised of handsome dogs, wow, does this breed fulfil it for us. You couldn't look at an Alaskan Malamute and not be stunned, could you? The sheer beauty and power, and they're splendid. This is a handsome dog from any angle. She's a good breeder, she's, she's a competent handler. Um, he's a dog in the ring that would be impossible for anyone to overlook. And she's, she's not a big person, so she makes the dog look extra special. A breed we have to admire because, do you remember, Andrew? I remember you as a, a much younger judge being terribly thrilled at getting the breed at a championship show without tickets, probably in the 80s. Lester? Yes, it was Lester. You were staying with um, us. And uh, when we got there, you had 10 paraded and every one of them tried to bite you. Mm. <laughs> you coped perfectly well, of course. Just as I'm coping with your slight exaggeration, but it makes a good story. <laughs> However... One did attempt to rip my throat out, I remember <laughs> that vividly. And the others looked at you as if they didn't mm -hmm. care for you. Um, but however, how this breed has improved, hasn't it? Yeah, and um, it's, I've had quite a bit to do with Malamutes this year. Yes. It's one of those breeds that is now totally cosmopolitan. So they've come on since your days at Leicester? And not one of them tried to bite me. <laughs> very, very stable temperament now, the Malamutes. But throughout today, we've spoken about the dogs at the very top of groups. However, we haven't looked at competition within breeds, and we don't really get time to. There's 200. We don't get time to look at competition in breeds. But that makes a big difference when you come to this top dog table. If you've got a highly competitive breed, you're not always going to get the same dog in the group, are you? Well, there are two ways of looking at it. I mean, the, the, the numerically weaker breeds and possibly breeds that are weaker for depth, um, some would say, well, it's a lot easier to get into the groups coming from those breeds. But having said that, you have the obvious example of, of this year, which is why Fox Terriers. <clears throat> you know, Oliver's had it all his own way, basically. But let's not forget 
King, the other wire. Yeah. He won best of breed in the group at Crufts, best in show at the FCI European show. Yeah. So, you know, numerically a small breed, you know, but a couple of really top dogs. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got breeds where you have large entries numerically, such as boxers, yes. which is a breed close to both our hearts, yes. where there are numbers there and, and there's also very high quality. Mm. So obviously you'll have a lot of different dogs competing when it comes to the CC and best of breed. Um, several of them getting group placings. And the breed is fortunate in that it's always had a very wide cross-section of judges. You know, they get a, a large number of all-rounders, they get a large number of foreigners, and pretty much without exception, they've said to either Di or myself, you know, the quality of boxers in the UK is possibly higher than anywhere else in the world. Mm. And we've and always been very lucky in boxers to have 15, probably, intelligent breeders. But it's a, it's a breed that, you know, has always been very encouraging of young people. Mm. But then the boxer temperament demands that they're fun-loving, they're the natural yeah. clowns, as are standard poodles, actually. So they demand an owner who wants a dog that wants fun. And it's almost a shame when one real star, like, say, Glory Lass, emerges, who was so splendid well, at that time. Max more recently. Oh yes, Max, of course, <laughs> because there are so many good ones mm. that deserve the recognition. It's, it's what we said earlier on, it's just your luck a lot of the times if you own the dog that's in the right place at the right time. Now, Andrew brought up boxers, but have you got any praise yes, for any particular breed? Yes, I think there are quite a few breed? breeds. Tibetan Terriers, for example, lots of intelligent breeders, lots of good dogs. I've recently been to a Papillon club show, only an open show. You know, something like 200 dogs. Uh, not necessarily consistent type all through, but, but still good dogs. Lots of pugs. You know, lots of breeds are holding. And a fascinating thing, in Beagles for the last four or five years, I could honestly give CCs to seven different bitches. I would have been struggling to find a dog ticket winner. Mm. Wow. So breeds do go through peaks and troughs, don't they? That's, that's just the way it goes. It's Bearded collies. Oh, good, aren't they? Bearded collies have a lot good. of depth, I think. Yeah. And while we're not talking about specific winners from this year, a little bit of something perhaps newsworthy. Over the past several years, all this talk about declining entries. Um, but this year, yeah. there seems to have been a slight reversal uh, shows are holding entries, some increasing entries. Yeah. That's great to see. Well, you know, I'm the positive one. Can we skip forward a bit and say now the Boston entries and the Manchester entries, the first two entries this year, are both up, well up. Let's forget the bad times we've had and think, hallelujah, the good days are coming back. Yeah. For both of these early shows to have drawn such good entries, congratulations to both societies. They work for their entries nowadays, don't they? Well, food for thought, certainly. Um, we've covered six out of the seven groups today. The last group is the Terrier group. But before we talk about this year's top Terriers, we need to stop off at the last general championship show of 2014. Champion Travella Striking Steel started the year at Boston with a best in show win. How would he end it? He and six other group winners went into the best in show ring at LKA under Michael Quinn. Please give a warm welcome to Michael Quinney. And the first dog to come in is the Australian Shepherd Dog, followed by the Bimarana, the Doberman, the Wire Fox Terrier, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, the Laza Apso, and the Miniature Wirehaired Dachshund. And the first one is the Australian Shepherd Dog. It is a bitch. It came forward as a winner of the pastoral group under Stella Clark. In the Australian Shepherd Dog, number 3107. And now we have the Vimarana, a dog, number 8659, you saw win the Gundog Group, under Sandra Marshall. The Weimarana, number 8659. 
the Doberman, a dog, and it came through from the working group under Meg Pennell Carpenter. The Doberman number 4883. There were 1,036 dogs entered in the working group here at LKA. On the table we have the Wire Fox Terrier. You saw this dog win the Terrier group earlier on under Paul Erdley, and there were 917 Terriers entered here today. The Wire Fox Terrier, number 10006. On the table now is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, a winner of the toy group under Andreas Schemmel. And there were 1,646 toys entered in the group. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, number 165. The Lata Apso. A bitch, number 2393, winner of the utility group under Jeff Corrish. The Laza Apso, number 2393. There were 1,458 dogs entered in the utility group. And so to the last dog to be judged here at LKA 2014 is the miniature wire-haired Dachshund. It is a dog and its number is 9372, and you saw it shortly winning the Hound Group under Jenny Dove. The miniature wire-haired Dachshund, number 9372. <laughs> Mr. Quinney has called for the boards. the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight? Yes. What would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. Best in show, LKA 2014 is the Wire Fox Terrier. And reserve best in show goes to the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Best in show, LKA 2014, the Wire Fox Terrier. Reserve best in show, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Top dog, 2014, yeah. Oliver, champion Travella, striking steel. Music to your ears, Bill? Just unbelievable. Who expected this a year ago? He's been shown 18 months, yeah. <laughs> 21 best in shows. It's just a dream come true. Don't you think so, Rich? Yeah, I mean, we show dogs to win. That's what, it's a competition. Yeah. But you never think for a minute that you're gonna win as much as, as he has won in such a short space of time. It's beyond all our dreams, really. And the, the last record-breaking Best in Show winner was Yogi, Hungarian Vizsla, and he won 18 Best in Shows over the course of five years. Yes. 18 months is phenomenal. It is unbelievable. This is what makes him... I've got to be honest with you, I think the record will be beat, but not over the period of time of 18 months. I can't see that happening, to be honest with you. We, he's just... Not in uh, my lifetime. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Maybe in your life too. Not the way you're living it up. <laughs> no, but it's it's an incredible thing. It is so incredible. Thirteen is one this year, isn't it? Thirteen this year, mate. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. When you think of it, and in one year, 13 best in shows is just incredible. Last year, you equaled the record with eight. Yeah. yeah. This is a, this is what makes it ridiculous. It's just wonderful, wonderful experience. And you've we've we've spoken to you a couple of times this year. Richmond was the last time. You're unbeaten, but he's not got a bad record, has he? No, he's not bad. a bad record. <laughs> uh, he, he's only won 18 of them, and I've won three. Yeah. Which isn't bad. That's right, isn't it? Three yeah. Out of three is not bad. Three out of three. <laughs> yeah. I've never been beat with him. So I'm quite happy with it. Um, no, but he's a lovely dog too. I mean, he's just, you can see him now. He's relaxed. He's got a wonderful temperament. And that's, that's what, look, he's just fantastic. He really is a fantastic dog. Uh, I'd be sorry to see him go. You'll, you'll be sorry to see him go. So what are his plans now? His plans are going to America. He's going to America. Fantastic. Hopefully he'll carry on winning. And he'll be as good with the new owner. The new owner is a lovely person, a dog lover, which is so important. Yeah. And he'll have a great life. And what, what are his plans in the UK, the, the remainder of his time? I, I understand he's going to Crofts? That's his last show, yeah. so we're going to keep our fingers crossed. But it, Crofts is Crofts, and it's a very difficult show, as you know. It's, yeah. uh, it's very difficult. As a pensioner, I would love to win it. I've been in dogs all my life, and it is my aim to win Crofts. I'm hoping that I'll be healthy enough to win Crofts one day. One Might not be with him, but one day maybe. Well, it's fantastic to watch him. It has been superb. Yeah. You know, when he's in the ring, he looks like he gives you a bit of a hard time now and again. You, you've won 18 best in shows with him, Richard. Yeah. Get, what is he like? No, he's he's a terrier, and they, they, you know they're not they're not robots. They they're they're dogs. <laughs> they, they do their own thing to a degree, but he puts it in when he needs to. You know, you wouldn't want a stuffed dummy. No. He's got a life. This dog's got a life, and that's what it's all about. It's not just having a show dog. It's having a dog what enjoys life. Yeah. And I'm, character. Oh, absolutely. unbelievable. Absolutely. I can groom him, and he licks me, and doesn't he? he I mean, yeah. he's silly. He just licks you while you're grooming. He's just got a wonderful temperament. And you, I've asked you before, but what makes him the great one? If you took a photograph of him and put him against the standard, he's as near to the standard as you'll get. But not only that, he's, what is most important, a great moving dog. And that's what makes him, for me, the best. And after last year, you came to LK, you ended up reserve <laughs> best know, in show. I know, You were, could have been joint top dog, which would have been unprecedented, but you finished two points shy. It's funny how things work out, because more than likely, if he would have been top dog last year or joint top dog, he would have probably gone abroad, more than likely. Uh, so because he wasn't... <laughs> Uh, he stayed, here he stayed and, as I say, the rest is history. So it's funny how things work out sometimes. And, and you'd be sorry to see him go as well? Oh, devastated. But, you know, life goes on. As long as he's happy and he's uh, happy in himself and winning, then, you know, we'll because be happy. they've got a good life, you see. What people don't realise, pets, when pet homes, are usually quite heavy, because I see a lot of pets in my business, and they're usually unhealthy. Show dogs are fit. And they're looked after, they're in good condition. Yeah. We'll sit back in the new year and have a drink or two and think, yep, it was fabulous. When I'm on my Zimmer frame, <laughs> I can think of all these memories. Well, congratulations, gentlemen. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. To you. Thanks very much. Same Thank to you. you. Diane Andrew, there's no doubt how the Terrier year, if you like, will be remembered. Oliver was, you know, Terrier behemoth. He dominated the ring from start to finish. Has he made a great top dog this year? I'll speak for him. I think he's a great dog. I think I sometimes watch him in the breed and I think what a good dog he is. But when he comes in the group, I think this is not just a dog. This is a big ring dog. Hmm. You know, he loves it. I had a dog like this myself, you'll remember, Tend, who was mediocre through the classes. But, oh, is this the big ring? Is it time to show off? And this is this terrier. He, we have to admire his showmanship. He's great with Bill, just as he is with Richard. He's a wonderful dog. He's been a great ambassador. I'm a fan. Well done, that terrier. Some truly astounding records this year. Of 26 best in show available on the UK calendar, he's won half of them. Last year, uh, or in 2013, sorry, he won eight best in show in a calendar year to equal the record. This year, he takes that total to 13 in a year, breaking the all-time record. Yeah. His total now standing at 21, and his career in the UK isn't over yet. No. Mm. Mm. I don't think that's going to be repeated. No. I, I, I don't know that it should be repeated. 
depends on Hi if there. a better dog comes along. Is it a little bit of a misnomer that one dog is better than all these thousands of dogs all year? No, I, it's a lovely, lovely thing to happen. This dog has earned it with his showmanship. There's lots of dogs that have deserved best in shows. Mm, absolutely. Despite his dominance in the group, there have been other very worthy group winners and, and potential best in show winners. Um, Andrew, you judged at SKC and picked out a Sky. Yeah, this was the um, Silly and the Special one. I watched the dog win the group at Crufts under Paul Wilkinson. Never had my hands on him before. I was impressed. I've been a great ringside fan of the Irish, the, the very young yeah. Irish, Lake Ridge Carl. As they came in, I thought actually he could possibly be my group winner. But he was just fighting Johnny Avis a little bit on the lead. The Sky's got the advantage of maturity, went round like a season's campaigner. Um, the Irish, you know, he's a typical young Irish, you know, he wanted to be everywhere. Exuberant. So he was sort of, you know, throwing himself around a little bit. But I mean, th those are two super terriers, without question. And that, Diane Andrew, wraps it up for 2014. Thank you very much. So let's take a look at the final Dog World Arden Grange top dog table. Leading the way, as expected, is Oliver, champion Travella, striking steel, well clear of the field. Runner-up was Mac the Bull Mastiff, and just a point behind after a particularly strong second half of the year was the long coat chihuahua Jeffrey. Fourth was the Malamute Bart, Misty the smooth coat chihuahua was fifth, and the year's top hound, Saluki Dexter, was sixth. In seventh place, and making it a remarkable three toys in the top ten, was Eric the Pekingese. Two utility breeds next in Jen the German Spitz Klein and Toy Poodle Star. And tenth top dog for 2014 is the Norwegian Elkhound Pearl. Well, Andrew and I, that's all of the top winners from 2014. Have you uh, had your eye on anyone for 2015? Well, as regards promising youngsters, um, Di earlier on in the programme um, mentioned Papillons. Um, at Midland Counties, I think it was. Yeah, Midland Counties. Um, I judged the breed there. And the CC and best breed went to a, a, a yearling bitch, a tricolour bitch, who absolutely blew me away. And the toy poodle of, of Tom and Lee's. Starina. That's, that's just gorgeous. Oh, there are so many good puppies about. What we have to remember, Simon, is there's a lot of luck in making top dogs. If you're saying, have we seen puppies we think deserve to win, have we just? Mm. Well, thank you, Andrew and I, for joining us today. Thank you all the way through 2014, and hopefully we see you both in 2015. I hope so. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we see you again on the next Around the Dog World when we get to take a glimpse at some future group and best-in-show winners at the Pro Plan Dog World Pup of the Year. Mm -hmm.